On day one, I spawned inside of a tall lava volcano as a baby lava worm. I looked around and watched as my fellow worms burrowed into the lava and used it to build up our home. Whoa, can I do that too? Just then, the sky above us turned gray and water started to blast down from the top of our volcano. Everyone run! One by one, every time they got hit, they would instantly turn into a obsidian no in a huge wave entered in the water reptiles men attack they flooded in through every corner of our once beautiful home and made sure that all of my kind was no more yes all of your pathetic lava monuments have already been taken over with your power gone, the lava people shall perish under the name of Cascade! I was scared and didn't know what to do. But then behind me emerged my mother. We have to go now. The two of us began to run through the battlefield. But just then, my mom got hit by a heavy water attack. Ah! Mom! This way, hurry! On day two, my mom and I were slithering through the volcano's tunnels as fast as we could. The reptiles were chasing after us and their presence alone turned the very lava in our caves to obsidian. This isn't good. But up ahead was a lava door passageway. It's an exit. Sadly though, before we could reach the lava, it mostly turned into obsidian. No, we're trapped. Is this it? Move aside. My mom then used a crazy lava power, building up a wall of lava that separated us from the lizards. And from it summoned a lava protector. The water reptiles began began to fight the Lava Guardian and were doing everything they could to get through. Blast this wall with water! Bozo, my boy, listen to me. I am, I'm not gonna make it, but you can. No, but. No, but. It is now up to you, the last Lava Worm. In order to save me and the rest of our people, you must go out and find the five Lava Monuments, reignite them, and unleash the Lava Warrior. Only then can we Win this! Just then, the lava wall got bursted through! Get them! Mom, no! She hit me through the crevice of the lava, and as I escaped, she also got turned into obsidian! Mom! I knew that I had to keep going, so I swam through the lava until I reached a shoreline. I have to find the lava monuments? Where do I even begin? As I finished my sentence, I saw a herd of magma snails charging right towards me. Oh no. On day three, I was bracing for impact, but the snails just ran right through me. The water reptiles found our monument. Everybody leave. Monument? Somebody please help. I followed the noises, entering what looked to be a burrow, but everything here was was destroyed. This isn't good. Stay away from me! I then looked out in the center of the room and saw a tiny baby magma snail cowering in fear. And is that a water golem? Lava must perish! Oh no, I have to help! On day four, I did my best to try and reach the baby snail, but the golem noticed and swung at me immediately. Ah! Not only did he try to smash me with his large rocky fists, but he also shot out beams of water straight from his eye and from them summoned water minions. What the? They all began to slash at me and hurt a lot. Help me! That crazy golem was summoned by those lizards to destroy my home. Not if I have anything to say about it. I finally avoided its hits and reached the vantage point with the snail. And just as I did, I felt a strange feeling from within me, causing me to shoot out a deadly lava shot right at the golem. Whoa, I have lava powers. The golem tried his best to fight back, but with my newfound confidence, I was able to counter him again and 
again. This is for my mom. And just like that, the golem was defeated. Because of his death, the entire room began to rumble and all of the watery destruction disappeared as the room transformed back into its former glory. Because of this, my body began to change. I was now a larger lava worm and gained five more hearts. Whoa, this must have been one of the five lava monuments. Yeah, it was. And you brought it back to its glory. It looks like you got stronger when you did as well. Thanks for saving me. My family all ran away and left me behind. Well, don't worry. I lost my family too. Maybe we can help each other get them back by stopping these water reptiles. Agreed. My name is Magmo. On day five, Magmo and I went to work by gathering enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, the two of us started to build up our very own homes inside of the monument. I made sure to take my time and make my own room nice and perfect. Hopefully, we can stay safe down here, the Blazing Burrow. Awesome. I think it's a perfect home. Just then, I noticed that I had a strange lava core inside of my inventory. I must have gotten this when I ignited the monument. Out of nowhere, the core came to life and popped out of me. What the? Hey, get back here. I chased the core down the burrow's tunnels until we reached a large room that held a stoned over statue. Without a second to think, the core shot itself within it, causing the entire statue to change. Wait a minute. Is this? Yup. This was our mighty lava warrior, the protector of all lava creatures. But when our monuments faded away, it looks like he did too. But if we ignite all of the monuments, then he will be back. So that's what I'm going to do. Just then, explosions sounded off on our roof. What is that? On day six, I followed the explosions until I saw coastal stables being under attack by the water reptiles. There were fire horses doing everything they could to escape, but the lizards made quick work of them and even captured a few groups. I will ask you one more time. Have you seen a rogue lava worm? No, we haven't. Please, leave us alone! You all had one job! Those lava creatures have taken something important from me, and they deserve this! None shall live, not even that pathetic worm! Just then, a couple of scouts walked towards them. We have to find that worm so that our plan for mass destruction succeeds. Go to Magma Rock Volcano and make sure that he doesn't try to ignite it. Magma Rock Volcano? Can that be another monument? The scouts all left, and I knew that I had to follow them. It wasn't long until we made it to a shoreline, and they quickly started to walk across the ocean? Great! How am I supposed to get there now? Just then, I got attacked behind by an undead spirit? Ah! What the? On day seven, the undead spirit continued to fight me. I was about to defend myself until... Take that! Who are you? I am Captain Babybeard. And it looks like there are even more spirits out and about. I am so confused. The baby pirate told me to follow him, and I did. It wasn't long until we reached a tropical cove that had a pirate ship far off on the water. That be me ship, but it was stolen by all these undead pirates. Wait a minute. If I help you get your ship back, can you take me to Magma Rock Volcano? Certainly. I love sailing. Now, how am I supposed to get on board? I looked over and noticed a rocky path that led straight to the side of the ship. Bingo! I began to partake in jump after jump, but as soon as I started... We have an intruder! Fire! Uh-oh! 
on day eight, the pirate ship began to blast at me with deadly cannon fireballs. Ah! I did my best, landing each jump, and knew if I fell into that water, I was done for. Sink him! Just one more jump. Come on! Yes! But then, the undead pirates all charged at once! Bring it! They sliced at me every chance they could. But since I was a newly upgraded lava worm, I had a new ability that allowed me to rain down lava rocks from the sky. Aha! Take that! With my new lava abilities, these undead pirates didn't stand a chance. Curse Ahoy! Ye did it, laddie! Ye beautiful ship! I've missed you! I'm just happy that you have what's yours. Now, do you think you can take me to that volcano? Certainly! Drop the mast! It's time we set sail! On days 9 to 10, the baby captain's ship docked at the shore of a very intimidating island. But the volcano's lava wasn't its natural color and looked more like water? Oh no, something isn't right here. Be careful, laddie. I will wait here. I walked on the island and immediately noticed a trail of water that had wrapped around the volcano all the way up. The reptiles must have beat me here. I followed the trail and even used my lava abilities to help me climb up some parts of the volcano until I finally reached the top where I saw Medusa standing at its core, the entire volcano. It's stoned over. <laughs> the lava worm. We have finally met. On days 11 to 12, I was face to face with Medusa. Wait, are you teaming up with the water reptiles? Why, yes. The very reptiles that are connected to my hair informed me of Cascade's mission. And honestly, I couldn't agree with them more. Medusa began to attack me with poisonous attacks. Ah! She would then get close and use her claws to slash at me. Stop this! They're hurting innocent lives! Families! You think that is bad? Just wait until you see what they have planned next. I would defend myself using my lava abilities, but she then lurched forward and stared me down with an intense gaze. Ah! Wait, was that supposed to hurt me? Ugh, why aren't you turning to stone? Oh, I don't have eyes. Gah, no matter. Medusa then summoned up a pillar of stone and continued to shoot down at me. None of my abilities can reach her. What am I gonna do? Wait a minute. I called down my molten meteor attack right in front of Medusa, creating a magma platform. Yes, I ran, jumping from the new magma platform. And as soon as I landed next to Medusa, I took her down with one final hit. What? Because of her defeat, the entire volcano became active again. Lava began to flow as I felt myself drawn in its power. I grew larger, gained five more hearts, and now had the ability to slither across lava. On days 13 to 14, I went back to my base with Captain Babybeard. Thanks for letting me stay with you. With those darn reptiles running around the ocean, it isn't very safe. Of course, you will be okay here. I found a spot in the base to build him up his very own miniature pirate ship. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Fozo. Also, if you find yourself running across any maps, give me a holler. I'm sure we can find ourselves some treasure. Will do, Captain. I then made it over to the Lava Warrior and placed down the second core. This caused him to light up and break free even more. Wow, I can't wait to see how he's gonna look when he's back to his former glory. Hey, <coughs> oh, Bozo! I looked over and saw that Magmo's shell was cracked? What happened? I went out searching for the next lava monument, but when I found it, I got attacked. I feel so weak. Oh no, I need to fix you up, but how? You know, I think I know a place that can help. On days 15 to 16, I journeyed out of the base with the magma snail until we reached a blazing bridge that led to a lava swamp. 
who lives here? We were about to cross over when we realized that the bridge was totally collapsed. Oh, come on. We need to get across. Yeah, yeah, join the club, buddy. I looked over and crawling on the side of the bridge was a lava axolotl. What the? Hey, we need help fixing my snail's shell. Oh, well, the only one that can help fix something like that is our grand axolotl. And unless you can get us across the bridge, we ain't seen them anytime soon. Ah, uh, I think... I think I have an idea. Everyone, stand back! When everyone cleared out of the way, I used my new lava slither ability to form a layer of lava across the broken bridge. Because of this, I was able to walk across and forge it fully back together. Yes! Eh, show off! But I will say that was kind of impressive. Come on, this way, to the Grand Axolotl! On day 17 to 18, we followed the axolotl deep into his lava swamp until things started to look strange. Just over this hill. We're close. We then finally reached his home, only to see weak and frail axolotls roaming around. There. <coughs> He's the one that can help us. In the center of the camp was the grand axolotl. What is the meaning of your visit? My friend, he needs your help. He's getting weaker by the second. And so are my people. The water reptiles destroyed our home. All because that Cascade wants his revenge. Revenge? What happened to him? A volcanic eruption. One that destroyed his home and changed everything he knew. And now he only knows destruction. I'm so sorry he attacked your people. But please, if you help my friend... Friend, I know somewhere safe for you all to hide. Hmm, so be it. Step aside. I did as he said, allowing him to approach Magmo. In a blast of mighty fire, the axolotl sealed his cracked shell, and Magmo became even stronger. Whoa. I, I feel like a brand new car. Let's go. Time we go to the next lava monument, the Lava Forge. On days 19 to 21, I followed Magmo as he led me to an ashen desert? Yep, it's not too far away. But I then saw a small group of water reptiles marching in a different direction. Where are they going? I have to find out. Bozo, stop. It's too dangerous. I followed behind the reptiles as they entered into a desolate landscape. What is this place? I then saw their main base. The place looked destroyed and it seemed like it was still in repair, but reptiles were working everywhere. They had anvils and other materials to reinforce their weapons. I went further in to investigate and came across a courtyard, one that was full of obsidian statues. My people and mom right next to her was an open spot. Is that supposed to be for me? Keep at it, boys! I watched as Cascade was up above the others. Our progress on the water volcano is coming along! And once it is finished, its eruption will be the biggest this world has ever known! All of those wretched lava creatures will be disposed of! Wait, did he say a water volcano? Now, take these disgusting statues and get them out of my sight. Then find that lava worm. Everything in me wanted to run in and fight, but then Magma moved in front of me. Bozo, no, we need to go. You're not strong enough. I know, Magmo. You're right. Let's go. On days 22 to 26, the two of us finally made it to the Ashen Desert. Whoa! Out in the distance was a tall plateau that held the Lava Forge, but it was completely turned off. As we made it to the entrance, I noticed that it was dark inside. Uh, hello? Suddenly, a hidden figure attacked me from the side. Ah! 
there standing over me was the Forge Master. You have no place here. He began to attack ruthlessly with his saw blade hand. Hey, knock it off. I began to fight back and launched my fire burst attack, causing the dark interior of the forge to light up. Oh, you're not a water reptile. I'm sorry. We are here because we want to reignite this place. Yeah, good luck with that. He started to walk off deeper inside. Hey, where are you going? I followed him until we made it inside of an engine room, which was completely shut down. Around the entire area were five empty fuel cells. My heat sources and lava creepers all got scared away when those water lizards showed up. They all ran off to who knows where, causing this forge to shut off. So, if we find them, we can reignite the forge. Can you show me which way they ran? On days 27 to 29, I left magma with the forge master as I began to search around the ashen desert. How hard can finding five lava creepers be? Aha! There! Who are you? Someone that's gonna get you back home. I continued to search, finding the second one hiding in a cluster of rocks, the third chasing a fox, and the fourth one hiding inside of a cave. Now, just to find the last one. <laughs> What was that? I ran over and followed the screams until I reached an oasis. But in the water was a massive water elemental. Hold on! I ran in and attacked the elemental. Take that! Ugh, Cascade has been looking for you. Come here! We began to fight and his attacks hurt me a lot. Ah, I hate water! <laughs> You are weak! No, I'm not! I blasted the elemental with all of my lava power I could muster, causing him to evaporate and shrink down in size? What the heck? Sorry. With one final hit, he was down for good. Yes. You saved me. Thank you. Of course. Now, let's get you guys back home. On days 30 to 32, I went back to the lava forge with all of the creepers behind me. Hey, forge master. Oh, you found them. Come on, get back in here. All of the lava creepers jumped into their tubes and almost instantly, the forge filled with light. So Sweet! Yes! The forge is now fully operational again! Because of this, I felt the monument of the forge start to empower me! I grew in size, gained five more hearts, and now I could rain down a beam of lava on my enemies! Awesome! Wow, Fozo! You look great! Thanks! We should head back to our base and check on the others. On days 33 to 35, we made it safely back to home and noticed that the axolotls also made it there. Thank you for letting us stay here. Of course! Let's get you all settled in. I had gathered enough materials from my adventure to build up the axolotls their very own lava swamp. And done! Why, I love it! From there, I went to the Lava Warrior, and as I approached, the Lava Orb shot out inside of him, and it seemed to empower him even more. Yes! It looks like we only need to recover two more monuments. Hey, back off! Was that Baby Beard? What's going on? I ran out of the base above ground and watched as multiple of the water reptiles were escorting him through the forest. Get your slimy hands off of me! Oh no, I have to help him! On days 36 to 39, I tried to follow behind the water reptiles as fast as I could until I reached a clearing showing their base. Everything looked even more fortified and repaired. Oh no, I can't just run in there. I need to stay hidden. I slowly snuck my way through and around the base, avoiding every reptilian soldier. Finally, I made it inside one of the structures, and that's when I saw Baby Beard trapped in a cage. I know you are working with him, so where is that wretched worm? I will tell you nothing! Cascade struck out at Baby Beard through the cage. No, I can't let him take anyone else from me. Hey, Cascade! 
you. Yeah, it's me. Now back away from my friend. <laughs> I'm glad that we finally get to meet. Oh, so. You're horrible. Taking innocent lives? My family? And for what? Power? Power? You think this is about power? You know nothing. On days 40 to 44, Cascade and I began to fight as he would attack me in a rage. Ah! I would fight back with all of my strength, but his water attacks made me weaker and weaker. I said, stay back. I am my new lava strike, knocking him away. Ah, if it weren't for you, ignorant lava kind, my family would still be here. What are you talking about? I once lived in peace with my family, my kids, my love. But because of creatures like you, an erupting volcano destroyed my homeland, making it the wasteland you see today. Waves of magma and fire burned it all to the ground, and my family with it. Cascade, uh, I I'm sorry, but... Silence! All of you lava kind shall feel the same pain that I felt! He charged in to attack me again. Wait! But suddenly, a portal opened up right underneath me and sucked me in. And shortly, Captain Baby Beard followed. On days 45 to 47, the pirate and I fell through a strange portal and landed in an even stranger area. Ah, where are we? You are exactly where you need to be. I turned around and coming out of the shadows was a female devil. Uh, who are you? Calm down, Fozo. I simply brought you here because I need your help. All right, help with what? She brought us out of this strange cave and to an overlook where I saw a pool of lava surrounded by five otherworldly pillars. I am from the underworld and you are going to help me get back by igniting all of those pillars. The underworld? How did you end up here then? That is none of your business. <sighs> the portal simply needs one that yields the magic of lava. So, can you get started? And why would I help you? Because one of the lava monuments that you seek reside in my realm, the Magma Chalice. The Magma Chalice? All right, lady. Fine. I fired my lava at one of the pillars, causing it to ignite. I slithered down and repeated on each and every one of the pillars until finally all of them were lit up with fire. This caused the entire cavern to shake violently. Uh, did I do something wrong? But then the lava pool in the center transformed into a deep passageway that led straight underground. Okay, kind of scary. On days 48 to 52, the devil lady and I jumped down into the hole, falling all the way down into the underworld. As I looked at my new surroundings, everything was horrifying and felt like a nightmare. But I then looked up at a hill and noticed a cute little goat. Aw, at least not everything here is bad. Look at you. Wait, don't. <laughs> you fool. In a fiery explosion, the goat turned into a full-fledged demon. Ah, what the heck? No living visitors are allowed in the underworld. And you, you know you don't belong here. The demon started to attack. He would use fiery blasts and his large, deadly scythe to his advantage. I tried my best to fight back, but because he was in his own terrain, he was much stronger. Ah, knock it off. Then the devil woman started to attack with me. She struck back at him with close range attacks and would even throw out spinning blades too. Whoa, she was awesome. Now let's finish this together. In a coordinated strike, the woman and I took the goat demon down. Curses, I won't forget this. 
Thank goodness he's dealt with. All right, Fozo, a deal's a deal. I'll lead you to where the magma chalice is being held. On days 53 to 56, the devil lady led me towards a castle that was in the distance. So, uh, it's in here? Yup. Have fun. Wait, where are you going? Uh, gee, thanks. I entered the main castle doors, not seeing a soul in sight until finally ahead of me, I found the large magma chalice. That's it. But why is it full of dog food? <laughs> Who goes there? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't mean you any harm. A living visitor? Leave my little home. This castle is little to you? Whatever. Look, I I'm sorry, but I won't leave until I ignite that chalice. <laughs> well, I'm not giving it to you. It's my new dog bowl. I lost my other one. To be honest, I really miss it. Wait, if I can find it, do you think I can have that chalice then? On days 57 to 59, Cerberus and I made a deal, making me venture across the underworld. I used my lava slither ability to help me journey across the large pools of soul lava. Now, where would I be if I were a dog bull? Just then, I heard a noise coming from the other side of the lava lake. Is that... Music? What the? As I made it over the lake, I saw a large group of shrub creatures dancing around in an underworld beach. Raised up in the center of it all was Cerberus's bowl. But why is it filled with boiling water? Whoa, whoa, hold up. I don't remember you being invited to the party. Explain yourself. It's okay. I'm just here for that bowl. Oh, you mean our hot tub? No way, pal. It's ours. More of the dancing shrubs started to circle around me aggressively. They looked like they wanted a fight. Okay, everyone, just calm down. There has to be a way I can get that bowl from you all peacefully. Hmm, okay, maybe one thing. Follow me. On day 60 to 63, I followed the shrub to a strange boiling hot lake. So, this used to be our huge hot tub, but then that grumpy old mushroom over there started to get all cranky. If you can go talk that bummer down, then the bowl is all yours. Got it. I walked over to the mushroom grove and looked for whoever this shrub could have been talking about. And that's when I found a mushroom with legs? Uh, hello? Grr! The creature then instantly started to attack. Whoa! He chased me around the grove, shaking off poisonous spores every chance that he could. Hey, just knock it off! Never! I will not let these bratty shrubs destroy my lake! I started to fight back with my lava abilities, but I could see that they hurt him a lot. Wait, why would the shrubs do that? Yeah, dude, we don't want to destroy anything. We just want to swim and party! The mushrooms seem to calm down and come to his senses. Oh, well, in that case, I could use a little company once in a while. Awesome! Come on, everybody! Let's dance! More and more of the shrubs came back around the boiling water and continued to all dance. Problem solved. Now, to grab the bull and get back to Cerberus. On days 64 to 68, I grabbed Cerberus's bull from the beach and returned to his castle to trade with him. Here you go, bud. Huh? Yes, 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 yes! Cerberus is so excited about his bull that he jumped for joy, shaking the ground with each pounce. He would even launch otherworldly attacks in his excitement. Okay, all right, boy, calm down. Uh, 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 Retro, sorry, I just really missed it. Please, do with the magma chalice whatever you wish. I went up and cleared the dog food out of the chalice so that I could blast it with my lava. This caused it to ignite and lighten up the room. Yes! I felt the underworld monument start to empower me. I gained five more hearts as I grew in size and gained the ability to attack with lava inferno chains. Awesome! 
On day 69 to 73, I exited from the underworld entrance to find that Magmo was there waiting for me. What's going on? Uh, something happened while you were away. We gotta go now. Huh? Where are we going? We went as fast as we could until I saw it. The water volcano. It was massive and its power was causing the whole world to shake. Keep fueling it fueling it? I decided to take a closer look with Magmo. So we snuck into the surrounding base. As we got near the top of the volcano, we saw that the reptiles were dumping my people inside of the core. No! I rushed in fast to defend them, using my new Inferno Chain's ability to take out the reptiles. But then, coming around the corner was a much stronger looking elite. Ah! The boss will be very happy with your capture, Lava Worm! Not if I have anything to say about it! Magmo and I began to attack as the Elite would try to push through our flames and get in close. And as he did, would swing at the Magma Snail. Watch out, Magmo! Magmo then launched a powerful earthquake attack to hurt the Elite badly. I then followed with my Inferno Chains for one final hit! Woohoo! We did it! After his defeat, the elite dropped a fire feather? I picked it up and then looked towards my mother's statue. Thank goodness you're okay, mom. Now, time to bring you all home. On day 74 to 77, I returned to my base with everyone. I went quickly to work, building up an area for my people's statues. Hopefully soon, I can free all of you guys. I also added more defenses and measures to fight against the water reptiles. That'll make sure no one could come in here and take you all away from me again. I promise, Mom, I will see you again. After that, I went to where the Lava Warrior was in my base, and another core absorbed into him. It looks like he's almost fully ready. Cascade and his men won't stand a chance. Suddenly, I felt my body begin to burn. Ah, what is that? I quickly dropped the burning feather I got from before, but as it hit the ground, it transformed into a small phoenix? Ah, boy, am I glad not to be stuck with those reptiles anymore. Oh no, did they capture you? Yeah, can you believe that? I'm just a messenger here, and actually, I was looking for you. Me? For what? I come with a message from my lord, the Lava Phoenix. He has much to discuss with you about the last remaining lava monument. On day 78 to 80, I went with the little phoenix as he led me to a lush mountain. And on the cliffs high above was some sort of giant cage. We continued until reaching the interior of the golden structure. Well, good luck. In a small burst of flame, he turned back into the burning feather. Great. Then the air started to heat up as I heard a loud, intimidating caw. Flying into the structure were the massive wings of the Lava Phoenix. So, the last lava worm, welcome to the final lava monument, the Pyro Pillars. Around the area were three tall pillars coated in smoldering ash. To awaken this monument again, the pillars must be reborn like a phoenix from the ashes. Sounds easy enough. But I am still not convinced of your worth. You are just a worm, after all. Well, someone's got to stop these reptiles, and it's going to be me. Very well. Time to prove it. Begin! On days 81 to 85, I began to move around the room, dodging attacks from the Phoenix. He's not holding back at all. He would attack with everything he had, but I dodged and used the lava ability to ignite the first pillar. Yes, he continued to fly and attack as I was trying to get past him. Uh, yeah! My attack flew out and struck them, causing the second second pillar to also ignite. Just one to go. Surprising, coming from a worm, huh? Roar! 
The Phoenix flew straight towards me in a rage. He struck me with a very powerful attack that I was knocked down to only a few hearts. Ah! Now, when you are at your end, can you still prove your worthiness? I have to. For my family. For everyone. I sent out blasts of lava. More powerful than I ever had before. This caused the phoenix to dodge out of my way. And for my attack to hit the pillar dead on. Because of this, the monument changed. I felt myself empowered by the pyro pillars. Gaining 10 more hearts. And now I could call down a large explosive meteor attack. Yes, I did it. That you did, Worm. So go and revive the lava warrior to stop Cascade. On days 86 to 90, I was making my way back to my base when suddenly the world began to shake. I watched as in the distance, Cascade's water volcano had been completed and it started to unleash a massive torrent of water into the sky. Finally, the entire world will know my pain. It began to rain heavily as the river and sea began to overflow and valleys everywhere started to flood. No, no, no. I need to get back to my base now. On days 91 to 94, I rushed back to base. Magmo, mom! But as I arrived into the burrow, I noticed all of the lava worm statues had come back to life. Fozo! Mother! You did it, my boy. You ignited all of our monuments. And because of you, you freed your people. I'm so happy you're both okay. There's just one more thing to do before we all take on Cascade. I walked over to the Lava Warrior and allowed it to absorb the final core. Our base began to quake as the Guardian was now fully awakened. Ah, the Lava Warrior. Yes, it's me. I've revived you so that you can help us stop Cascade and the water reptiles. Me? I was never meant to be the one to stop them, my dear boy. What do you mean? Can't you see? All of this was to prove your worth. This is your fight, your journey, Pozo. And you are to be the Lava Warrior. With those final words, the Lava Warrior passed on all of the Lava Core's essence to me. I felt the lava element within me surge with power like I had never felt before, causing me to grow much stronger. It's up to me. Then it's time to take down Cascade. On days 95 to 99, I marched towards the water volcano with the power of the Lava Warrior. There, watching over me from atop the mountain was none other than Cascade. Look who finally decided to show up. I thought you had run away after taking back your people. You're wrong, Cascade. I saved them with the power of the lava monuments. And now I'm gonna stop you. Is that so? Ha! Men, drown him! An army of water reptiles poured out of the kingdom and overran me. I did everything I could to clear out the army of them as I launched down lava meteors and infernal chains. But more and more of them just kept on coming. I continued to push my way further into the kingdom, but knew that I didn't have time for this. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice call out into the air. Crashing in the center of Cascade's base was Captain Babybeard's entire pirate ship. I've been waiting to do this for a long time, you overgrown lizards! Fire! His ship's cannons obliterated all of the reptiles in sight, leaving an opening. Sorry I'm late, Lava Warrior. Go on ahead! Thanks, Captain! Here I come, Cascade. On day 100, I made it to the top of the water volcano to finally face Cascade. I thought maybe you'd understand how I felt after what I almost did to your people. You can't just hurt people. No one meant to destroy your home. Enough! 
We started to battle my empowered lava against this powerful water. Obsidian and small boulders would form as we would clash. I could tell that Cascade wasn't holding anything back as he would shoot out loads of water waves towards me. He then decided to come in close as we just kept trading our elemental hits. <laughs> In a flurry of hits, Cascade overpowered me, sending me backwards. Yeah, he's still so powerful. With the power of this geyser, I will show you all. Not if I have anything to say about it. I use my lava abilities, focusing all of my energy on taking him down. With my final attack, I summoned down a massive magma meteor shower. It crashed down onto the volcano and even landed straight onto Cascade, defeating him for good. Yes, I did it. And with that, the world could now live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a warden worm deep within my desert ancient city. I looked around only to see my warden people being attacked by a bunch of monster hunters. Are they after us? I ran throughout the battlefield and watched as the hunters started to hurt and capture my people as if they were just doing it for fun. Ha <laughs> that's two points. I'm going for three. As I was distracted, I was spotted by one of them. He rushed into attack and I thought I was done for until our warden elder jumped in the way and took him down. We can't let them capture you, my boy. You are special and we're created so that we can put an end to these hunters. Me? But how? Just then, a much larger monster hunter slammed down in the center of our city. Where is that warden worm? I, Urgent, will hunt you down just like the rest of this world's monsters so that I can be the most powerful hunter yet you need to leave now and find Aaron he will know how to make you strong enough to save our people Odin then noticed the two of us and rushed forward only to unleash a powerful attack on my elder no 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 I ran for my life, leaving all of my people behind. Capture these pathetic monsters and get me that worm. On day two, I was slithering through the caves as fast as I could with monster hunters chasing behind me. They shot at me using their advanced hunter gear. Oh no, I'm trapped. <laughs> you know, we enjoy taking your people down. And once we have you, ha! Our power will be used to kill the rest of the monsters in this world. I'm not a monster. Out of my frustration, I began to mine deep in the ground. Whoa, I can burrow. Oh, no, you don't. Get the drill. Using this newfound ability, I began to mine a path to get me out of this cave. It wasn't long until I heard heavy machinery and realized there was a drill mining right after me. Ah! I then mined out of a wall side only to find myself inside of a strange nest home what is this place there you are <laughs> the monster hunter began to rush in but out of nowhere dropped down a very large griffin beast on day three, the griffin started to fight off the monster hunter, easily destroying his machine. The hunter ran up and tried his best to hurt him with his weaponry, but the griffin sliced him with his claw and sent him back. He had incredible agility and strength and would even use his wings to summon deadly gusts of wind around us. No! No! The griffin then landed on the hunter, taking him down for good. Whoa, you, you saved me. I thought I was safe, but the bird turned towards me and approached with anger. Wait, uh, I don't mean you any harm. This is my home and you are not welcome here. I was backed into a corner and thought I was done for. Please, look, I'm looking for Aaron, okay? My people, they're in danger. Well, it's true. You must be the creature the Wardens have spent years creating. 
Fine. I'll help take you where you need to go. On day four, the griffin flew me high up throughout the lands, but all I was seeing was pure chaos. The world was full of deadly villages and outposts filled with cages of different beasts, animals, you name it. The hunters are doing this? This is horrible. This is the world now. With Odin and his people at large, all creatures of any kind are being hunted down and stripped of their freedoms, including your wardens. We then landed within a desert ruin with a strange warden eye artifact sat at its center. Go and pick it up. Okay. I listened, and once I touched it, my entire body began to shake. I gained five more hearts and grew larger in size, becoming a stronger warden worm. Whoa! This is the first of five warden eye fragments. They grant any being incredible beast like abilities when equipped. I am Aaron and have helped the Wardens in their quest on creating you. They believe your strength can be enough to stop this. Well, if these items increase my strength, then I will go out and find all of them. Rustling then sounded off, and out of the bushes rushed an advanced hunter. There you are. We have all the Wardens under our watch, and when I bring you in, I will be rewarded on day five the advanced hunter rushed in and began to attack he summoned two more arms and now had four very sharp swords oh no but with my new upgrade i now had the ability to shoot out deadly skulk venom at him ha take that we fought each other blow for blow he was not an easy opponent as he shot out poison all throughout the area but i knew i could not let my people down with the one final skulk venom attack i was able to fully take down the hunter yes upon his death dropped a note that said do not let that worm find those warden eye artifacts go out and find the croak empire before he does the croak empire huh that must be where another one is i knew that there were going to be more hunters after me so aaron and i started to forge a new hideout within this desert ruin i made my very own home inside of a sand cave while i also made aaron a small nest lying on top of a tree as aaron and i were admiring our new work i saw a sand block fall near my cave oops Oh no. What was that? I walked over only to see a tiny warden hiding in fear. No, please don't hurt me. I barely was able to escape from those hunters. I have nowhere else to go. Escape? Where exactly did you escape from? On day six, the tiny warden brought me within the nearest forest until we reached an outpost much larger than the ones I'd seen before. I watched as countless hunters were inside, upgrading their weaponry. And right next to them were rows of cages holding wardens and my warden elder. Let us go. Ah, shut it. I have to get them out of here. I was about to run in, blinded by my rage. But just then, Odin entered the courtyard. Everyone listen! This warden worm is a threat to our clan. Do you not understand? It can grow to be the strongest among all beasts in this world. This is why we must obtain its scales so that we can forge weaponry with power like no other. But we will need backup. He then walked forward and ignited a platform, causing lightning to summon all around him. In one huge burst, dropped down a knight bounty hunter. Magnus, I know you've never failed a hunt, which is why I need you to go and find that worm. Very well. Leave it to me. Oh no, this isn't good. I need to find the Croak Empire, fast. You mean that kingdom of frogs? I know where that place is. Come on, follow me. On day seven, the tiny warden led me deep within a swamp. 
but we were quickly met by a moat. Is that polluted swamp water? Gross. I then looked across and waiting on the other side was the Croak Empires. Okay, but how do we get across? I think think I have an idea. Follow me. I used my burrow ability, allowing me to dig deep underground. Thankfully, I was able to mine below the moat and make it safely on the other side. However, as I exited, I found myself in the middle of their entire kingdom. Maybe I mined too far? Halt! Oh, uh, woodworm. Uh, those words are really getting creative with their creations, huh? Huh, yeah, no kidding. We know why you're here. You will not get that war knife fragment. I then looked up, and lying on their tallest tower was the Warden Eye. Please, I need it. Just then, I heard a very loud and in a huge splash landed their king, Frog. I am Emperor Croak. We see that Fragment has good luck to our people. We have lost too many to those hunters. Well, I'm trying to stop them. There has to be some way I can get it from you. You know, this empire loves a show. I think I have an idea on how you can prove your work. On day eight, Emperor Croak brought me back to the center of their kingdom with a crowd of frogs watching. The rules are simple. If you can get to that warden fragment, you win. But in order to do that, ah! you have to get past the king. Okay, deal. Horns then sounded off, and the frog king began to attack me. He used his high leaps to his advantage and pushed me back away from the tower. Ah! Pack off! I fought back, using my skull venom on him, and tried my best to get to their tower. Unfortunately, he would shoot out deadly water attacks at me, and even shot his tongue out, swallowing me whole. Let me out of here. Ah, ow! Wait a minute. I have an idea. I continued to fight the frog, and waited for him to shoot his tongue again. Here goes nothing. He shot me out. Come on! I did it! I reached the Warden Fragment! I picked it up, causing me to upgrade once more. I gained five hearts, grew in size, and now had the ability to do explosive bites at my enemy. Awesome! I went back to the courtyard towards the king. Emperor Crow is very impressed. You earned it. But without this fragment, my kingdom's luck is gone. You know, I think I have an idea. On days 9 to 10, I gathered up all the frogs in the Croak Empire to come back to my base. Thank you for offering shelter to my people until we stop those men. Odin will stop at nothing to take us all down. Yeah, I know. I just don't get why he hates us so much. I'm not quite sure. Sure, but what I've heard is that he lost someone very close to him, but it's just a rumor. Who could he have lost? We continued to walk out of the swamps and back towards the desert until I heard a voice coming towards us. The sky became clouded as flames appeared and a figure rose from the ground. You, I thought I smelled a warden worm around here. Oh no, leave, leave now. The frogs and the tiny warden all left back towards my base. You, you're trying to hunt me down. What you hunters are doing, it's not right. Not right? You are monsters, beasts. You don't know any better, especially you wardens. Oh yeah? Well, I'll show you. Magnus then charged straight in. He spun around and slashed me with his very large sword. Ah! With just one hit, I was knocked down to only a few hearts. Oh no, he's too strong. I gotta get out of here. I began to burrow down into the ground, but Magnus ran down the tunnel straight behind me. Get back here. He was about to catch me, but thankfully, I dug straight underneath a pool of lava. It fell and separated the two of us. Count your days, you worm. They are numbered.
On days 11 to 12, I made my way back to base and saw that all of the frogs and the tiny warden made it here safely. Thank goodness. I got to work building up a place for all of the frog people. I made sure to theme it around their kingdom so that they could feel just at home. After that, I quickly was able to build the tiny warden their very own tiny home as well. Wow, Fozo, this is amazing. Oh, and that reminds me, I wanted to show you something. What is it? The tiny warden then used her warden senses to locate and pull out from the ground all of the surrounding ore around our base. We are wardens, remember? I can sense everything. Whoa, that's awesome. Thanks. With the tiny warden's help, I was able to find enough iron to make myself a set of iron tools. Awesome. Fozo, I'm glad you made it back safely. And by the looks of things, you're even stronger now. I am, Aaron, thankfully. Well, if you're up for another journey, I found where the next Warden Fragment is. You did? Yes. Now come on, I'll show you. On days 13 to 14, I followed behind Aaron until he brought me to the top of an icy mountain. At its peak were strange pillars surrounding a Warden Eye Fragment. But something was wrong. It's frozen? That's right. This fragment is useless unless we can melt it. And there is only one way to do so. How? Aaron led me to the side of the mountain, overlooking the rest of the tundra. Deep within this land lies a very dangerous ice beast. But with its help, we just might be able to thaw this fragment. Be warned. He is not friendly. Great. He then flew away with the frozen fragment to keep it safe at our base. And I continued into the tundra until I saw a fire? That's not normal. I approached and started to see that the fire was coming from a burning tundra village. It was being raided by the monster hunters. Oh no. On days 15 to 16, I watched as monster hunters began to corner some defenseless tundra creatures. Please. No, wait. One of the hunters swung and killed the creature without a second thought. I have to stop this. I charged in and used my new explosive bite to attack them. They turned to fight back, but I was quick and was able to take all of them down with my abilities. Yes. I looked around at the burning village and just when I thought I killed the last hunter, one of the home's walls exploded outwards. Yeah. We finally meet face to face. Odin, you have to stop this. All of it. You're hurting countless innocent lives. Lives? You guys are just monsters. He leapt into the air and tried to slam down onto me, summoning lightning everywhere. Stop. Look, I heard you lost someone close to you. I'm sorry, but you can't just take it out on us. You know nothing about me. My father, he was the greatest hunter to ever live. He taught me everything from skinning a rabbit to slaying beasts like you. Then one day on a hunt, he never returned. He was killed by one of you monsters. Your beasts ended his life. And now I will do the same to all of you. He threw one of his axes directly at me and I was barely able to dodge out of the way. I gotta get out of here. I made a break for it. But just when I was about to make it out of the village, I felt the ice crack from underneath. Ah! Huh, I will avenge my father if it's the last thing I... Dear. On day 17 to 18, I fell down and into the center of an ice temple. Ow! Where am I? The area looked abandoned and almost completely forgotten, except for... Ah! There was a tundra creature hiding behind a pillar. Hey, I'm not gonna hurt you. You're, you're not one of those hunters. They took my family from me. I know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to stop them, but I have to find an ice beast in order to do so. Oh, you mean the Yeti? Follow me. Wait, Yeti? He led me over to a very dark cave entrance deeper in the temple. So he's in here? Yep. Yeah. I began to slowly creep inside until I was totally encased in darkness. And then... Ah! Oh, 
Ah, as I recovered from the hit, rushing out of the darkness was a huge ice yeti. On days 19 to 21, the powerful yeti jumped towards me in a rage, swinging at me with his giant fists. Hey, I began to fight back using my explosive bite attack. But the Yeti was so strong, he barely seemed to flinch. I tried to run and gain some distance, but he would keep burrowing towards me before forming a ball of ice that kicked at me. Ah, stop it! I'm not here to fight you! Yeah, please. I can't do that. I need your help in unfreezing a warden fragment. Help! Hunters attack because of you! Now, leave my home! Please, Yeti! The monster hunters attacked my village. They took me away from my family. They need to be stopped! The Yeti calmed down. Fine, if you want help, I show you. But you do the rest. Show us what? Both of you. Follow. On days 22 to 26, the Yeti led us out of his icy caves until we came to a large lava and ice lake. Unfreeze fragment, the item you need. Here. In the lake? Yes, under the lake. You must find it. Okay, here I go. I began to dig deep down, tunneling under the pool, searching for any clue of the Yeti's item. But as I dug, I accidentally mined in another icy cave with spikes falling down. Okay, a uh, wrong way. I continued to dig, having to dodge around more traps and being careful not to dig too close to lava pools. Eventually, I I found it. Another cave opening, but it was no longer icy. And in the center was a pedestal holding a potion of molten magma. This, this has to be it. I rushed up and grabbed the potion. This will definitely unfreeze the frozen warden fragment. On days 27 to 29, I went back to my base, potion in hand and seal with me. I found that Aaron had built some sort of containment pillar for the frozen fragment. Hey, here you go. Good work, but it'll take some time to set things up. While he was doing that, I went and got enough materials to make Seal their very own home to stay in. Thanks, Fozo. It's nice to know us creatures have each other's backs. Agreed. I ran back to Aaron and saw that his containment area was now filled with hot magma. Okay, I'm guessing it's ready. I then watched as the frozen fragment began to melt and crack until it finally thawed. Yes! I grabbed the fixed fragment, causing me to become even stronger. I gained five more hearts and felt my body grow. Now, I could use my size to shake the ground around me with a powerful slam attack. Awesome! So, is it true? Rumors quickly spread that Odin's father was killed by a beast. Yeah, and now he's letting his rage blind him. It just doesn't make any sense. His dad was known as the world's strongest monster hunter. Things aren't adding up, Fozo. What do you mean? Stop it! What was that? I ran out of the base to see that there in a cage was my warden elder? Oh my goodness, you're okay. I'm getting you out of here now. I ran up to the cage and noticed that she looked weak. My dear boy, no, get out of here. It's a trap. What? Before I knew it, Magnus appeared, leaping down between me and the elder. As he did, giant walls of metal formed around us, trapping me in. <laughs> you were... You aren't going anywhere! On days 30 to 32, I was face to face with Magnus in his metal arena. You used my elder as bait? Yes, and you fell for it! There's no running this time! He rushed in to attack me, spinning around wildly with his sword and shield. Ah! Take this! I used my new power slam ability, causing the ground beneath us to erupt. The attack definitely hurt Magnus, but the blast also hit my elder. Ah! 
Oh no, I need to be careful. Magnus used the opening to kick me back, then followed up with multiple sword attacks as I was cornered. I was starting to get lower and lower on hearts, and he kept blocking my attacks. I can't give up. I used my explosive attack to push Magnus back, but his hits were just way too strong. Magnus then landed a blow that almost knocked me out. Ah! It's a pity they want you alive. You're coming with me. My vision went blurry from the fight, and I started to pass out. On days 33 to 35, I woke up chained to a strange platform in the middle of a room full of monster hunters. Ah, I feel so weak. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Warden Worm, you really thought you'd put an end to my empire? What did you do to me? More so, what did you just do for us? We have taken some of your scales, and with them, we will upgrade our weaponry so that we can move on to the next part of our plan. Next part? Quiet! Hunters, get to work! In this one, put him with the others. We have what we want. A couple of hunters walked forward and began to escort me deep underneath their outpost. It wasn't long until I was thrown into a cage in a room filled with my wardens. Fozo, I'm so sorry. I tried to warn you. It's okay. We're all alive. That's what matters. Odin is planning something, though. We need to get out of here and fast. Yeah, good luck, pal. These people only see us as entertainment here. Entertainment? Just then, the opposite side of my cage opened up. What the? I walked out only to have the door slam behind me and to see that I was in a massive arena with monster hunters looking down at me. Oh, no! On days 36 to 39, I looked around the whole Colosseum. I need to find a way out of here! I then heard another cage open on the opposite side, and walking out of it was a tall amethyst golem! Fight! 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 Whoa, 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 wait! We don't have to listen to them! We can work together and get out of here! Get out of here? Impossible! So, it's either you or me! No hard feelings. The golem then started throwing amethyst shards at me. I dodged them, only to realize they turned into tiny amethyst golems? What the? They ran at me while he continued to attack with his massive arm. We began to fight as he attacked me continuously. Ah, stop it. Fight me. The golem stomped on the ground and sent forward shards of amethyst that hit me on the head. No, we are not monsters. In my frustration, I unleash an extremely powerful warden boom, destroying everything around me. Whoa. What? Close the cages. Don't let them escape. In the midst of the destruction, I noticed that there was a way out. I got to get the wardens and get out of here. On days 40 to 44, I escaped with all the wardens straight out of the hunter's outpost. Thankfully, we were able to make it safely back to base. That was close. Before doing anything else, I made sure to get enough materials to build up all of the wardens, their very own ancient styled home. And done. Oh, Fozo, I'm so proud how strong you've become. The warden elder collapsed right in front of me. Why is this happening? Bozo, what's wrong? Aaron, the hunters, they must have done something to her. She looks so weak. If we don't do something soon, she might not make it. But we have to help her. I have an idea on where we can get an item that might help her, but we have to hurry. Odin, uh, we, we had no idea that he would escape. Rawr! I trusted idiots with one job! One! And now that worm is back out in the world. Rawr! No matter. Those of you who are still worth the air you breathe, forge your weapons! Once my exes possess that worm's power, he won't be a problem anymore. On days 45 to 47, I went as quickly as I could with Eren until we arrived at some sort of desert dungeon. 
but the entrance was sealed shut. Great. Now what? I'll fly up and look around. Aaron took to the skies as I looked more intently at the entrance. I noticed that the door was being held up by two pillars that sunk into the ground. That's it. I tunneled below the door and straight through each of the pillars, breaking them down one by one. When the last one was broken, the entire entrance collapsed and was opened up. You did it! The two of us ran inside, only to see the dungeon's vast, dark interior. Whoa! There, that's the item we need. I looked up and saw that in the center of the chamber was a large tiki sitting in the center, and behind it laid the golden totem of healing. That's it! I began to hurry towards it, but as I moved forward, I heard a click under my body. Uh-oh! The whole room began to shake, and suddenly the entire floor dropped down, exposing a large, elaborate parkour towards the center. And if I fall, I'd land on deadly spikes. Great. Activate defense mechanism. I then noticed that the tall tiki in the center had come to life. It started to launch elemental attacks around the platforms. Okay, focus. I have to get that totem. On days 48 to 52, I started to jump between the floating platforms heading towards the totem, but the tiki heads were spouting flames directly at me. Ah! I jumped away to one of the platforms just before I saw a rock flying right at me. It hit me head on and I almost fell straight off. Knock it off. Intruder! Stay back! Bolts of lightning started to flash throughout the room, making it even harder to jump across. But I knew I had to do it. Here goes nothing. I jumped and finally made it on top of the center platform. But as I did, the tikis all dissembled into three individual ones. Ah! They began their attacks, each wielding a different elemental power. I began to fight back when one of them seemed to recognize me. Wait. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Are you the wooden one? Yeah, I kind of need that totem to save my elder. Well, why didn't you say something? Us tikis don't have very good eyesight, you know. We know about your quest to take down those hunters, and we totally agree with it. Ow, oh, ow, oh, uh, follow us. You should see this. The tikis led me into a separate room of the dungeon, and there was a map? We've been guarding this bad boy. It should lead you to your next warden fragment. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those crazy hunters have been trying to get into this place for ages to get it. That's why we had to secure the entrance. Oh, sorry about that. Eh, forget about it. You can take the map and the totem. Just stop those hunters. On days 53 to 56, Aaron and I rushed back to our base. I ran directly into where my elder was resting and placed the totem of healing next to her. This caused the entire room to instantly start glowing. Yes, yes. In a burst of vibrant light, my elder stood up and looked completely healed. <gasps> my goodness, thank you. Those hunters didn't treat us well at all. I didn't think I was going to make it. I'm just glad you're okay. My, you really have grown so much. I'm so proud of all you have done for our kind. The work isn't done yet. I just got this map that leads to the next Warden Eye fragment. It looks like it shows something called the Grand Forest. Ah, that forest is a dangerous place. You must be careful. I know, but it seems like I don't have a choice. I need those fragments to stop. Odin. On days 57 to 59, I was making my way to the Grand Forest, and I stopped only to see a massive tree line. Whoa! I then heard screams. Run! Run! I ran towards the trees to see that on the edge of the forest was a town of smaller tree people, but they were being raided by the monster hunters. Oh no, the hunters were using their new and improved weapons to cut down the homes and tree people with ease. They weren't kidding. They upgraded their gear. Hey, hunters, over here. The wooden worm, get him. I rushed into battle and fought off as many of the hunters as I could. I 
use my abilities to hit multiple of them at a time, but they were much stronger than before. <laughs> you think we are a challenge? You have no idea how strong Odin has now become. No, I started to fight harder than ever before, using my power slam to knock out a group of them, and then my explosive bite to take down the final one. With only a few hearts to spare, the tree village was saved. That was close. You have saved us, weird creature. I can tell you're not from around here. Yeah, I'm visiting this forest, looking for a warden eye fragment. Oh, if you want that, you must travel to the forest core. Can you lead me there? For saving my home? Absolutely. On days 60 to 63, I followed the tree person as they led me deep into the grand forest until we met a clearing, revealing a lost kingdom. The fragment should be in there, the core, but I shall go no further. I pushed forward inside the main entrance and found an ominous clearing. There, high up in the branches, was the warden fragment. Yes! Now, just to get it. Why have you come here, warden worm? Who said that? I looked out, and appearing through the trees was a tall treant. I am Skull, guardian of this fragment. I need that fragment, Skog. For what? To stop the hunter Odin, I presume? Yes, he has to be stopped. It's the only way. No, you will do no such thing. Skog suddenly rushed towards me in a rage. Wait! On days 64 to 65, Skog moved in and started to attack me. He was so powerful and used the elements of nature to his advantage. He would stomp on the ground and cause jaw-like plants to appear and hit me. Ah! I knew I had to fight back. Stop this! We're on the same side! Skog was fueled by rage and kept hitting me. He would reach in to the earth and cause roots to shoot out towards me. Why? Why don't you want to defeat Odin? Be quiet! He was about to attack again, but I ran in and bit into him with my explosive bite. Gah! This caused Skog to stumble back and briefly stop attacking. Uh, Odin, his actions are wrong. But it's all his father's fault. It's my fault. What? Wait, you're Odin's father? But how? Odin followed in my footsteps as my goal was to become the greatest hunter to ever exist. I would exceed my goals and reach higher and higher, slaying hurting animals and creatures, treating them like nothing but monsters. But then, on one fateful hunt, I was cursed into becoming the very thing I hunted. I knew my people would never accept me back, so I couldn't return. I came here, and over time, I have finally realized that the beasts we have hunted have emotions as well. So, you didn't die to a beast. You became one? Odin should know. He can't know that his own father has turned into the very thing he hates. But maybe if he knew, he would change. He hates the beasts because he thought you died to one. Skog suddenly smashed at the branch above, dropping the fragment. Maybe, just maybe, you are right, Worm. You may take the warden fragment. Thank you. I ran up and grabbed it, and this caused me to grow in power again. I gained five more hearts, and now I could rain down bursts of Sonic Boom energy from the sky. I felt so much stronger than before. On day 66 to 68, I was on my way back to base with Skog, when suddenly Odin's lightning struck, and he was now right in front of us. You really thought you could escape from me? I'll give you credit. If there is one thing we both have in common, is that we both don't know when to give up. Odin, wait! He ran straight towards me with his sonic boom charged axes, but Skog jumped in the way, taking the blow. Ah! Odin began to attack as hard as he could, hacking into Skog's tree body. I could tell Skog didn't want to, but he began to defend himself. Odin, you need to stop this! 
Odin and Skog continue to fight until Skog hit him back with his root attack. But Odin countered with a very heavy hit. Now you shall die. Odin, son, it's me, your father. He stood there stunned. That can't be true. My father, he was a hunter. I was, but my rage turned me into this, son. These creatures have feelings, lives that we are just taking from them. You have to stop this now. I can't believe this. You may have been my father before, but you are not him today. Ah! Wait, Odin slung with the final heavy blow that killed his father. No! I knew I had to run as I quickly burrowed straight down and away from Odin. I have to get the final fragment. I have to. On day 69 to 71, I tunneled all the way to my base and saw that all of the wardens looked healthy again. They were even all working throughout the base, helping my other friends. The elder noticed me and walked over. This, Fozo, is what being a warden is all about. We are protectors. Our people are meant to keep all of the world's creatures safe. This is so amazing. I was admiring all of them when suddenly I heard the tiny warden panicking. Fozo, Fozo! Hey, what's wrong? Are you okay? Y yes, yes I am. I was just roaming around outside the base when I saw some monster hunters. They made a camp nearby. What did you find out? Well, I overheard them talking about the final warden fragment, but it is in possession of Magnus, and I know exactly where he lives. Great! Can you tell me? On day 72 to 74, I roamed around the overworld until I reached a clearing, and there it was, Magnus's keep. The huge walls and battlements were guarded and well too fortified for me just to dig through. Huh, I need to find another way in safely. Rah, I know it's around here somewhere. Uh, what was that? I walked over to the noise and saw an armored enderman. Come on, come on. Where did I put my sword? Hey man, are you okay? No, I'm not. I lost my sword. How am I supposed to be an enderman knight without my sword? Whoa, whoa, it's okay. Wait a minute. I have an idea. If I find your sword, would you teleport me inside of that keep over there? You, my friend, have a deal. On day 75 to 77, I began to burrow around the area. The Enderman said that he just went mining. It has to be around here somewhere. I then dug into a large cave. On a mound of stone was the Enderman's sword. Yes! I started to move closer, but then I realized that the cave had large cracks in the floor filled with lava. No, how do I get across? I looked around the room and noticed that the roof of the cave was made out of ton of loose gravel. Perfect. I shot my sonic venom ability, striking the roof and causing all the loose blocks to fall. Because of this, the large cracks in the ground were now filled with gravel, allowing me to walk across safely. I picked up the sword and quickly tunneled my way back to the surface and reunited with the Enderman Knight. Oh, yes! Thank you, thank you! Of course! Now, can you get me inside of that keep? Oh, yeah, with ease. On day 78 to 80, the Enderman Knight teleported us far below Magnus's keep inside a dungeon room. Okay, now to get that fragment and get out of here. I started to walk through the dungeons, heading up the main outpost, but I was quickly stopped when I saw cages filled with the tundra creatures I saw earlier. We feel so weak. You, you guys are Seal's family. Come on, let me help. I used my worm ability and broke open their cages. Thank you, Warden Warm. Of course. Stay here. I'll be right back. From there, I went up through the keep, making sure to avoid any hunter guards that were on post. It wasn't long before I entered a main courtyard room and in the center held the final Warden Fragment. Yes, I walked up 
up and picked it up, causing my body to change one last time. I gained 10 more hearts, grew larger in size, and was now a very large warden worm. I did it. On days 81 to 85, I was leaving the room, but was interrupted by Magnus walking out from the shadows. You really have come back for more, haven't you? I do have to say, I am quite impressed with your escape, but I am Magnus, the best bounty hunter there is. No one escapes my capture. He charged in and began to attack me. I'm here to show you how wrong you really are. I fought back, this time using my newly found abilities. Because I was a fully upgraded Warden Worm, I was able to summon a tornado of Sonic Boom energy. Magnus felt my newly found strength. Last time, he was able to overpower me, but now he was no match. No, no! With one final hit, I was able to fully take down the Night Hunter. Ha, take that. From there, I quickly gathered the Tundra creatures outside and started our journey back home. But as we started our travels, I heard a loud, Oh no, what can that be? On days 86 to 90, I separated from the creatures, heading straight for the horns. But the sight that met me was absolutely horrifying. I watched rows of destruction caused by the newly upgraded hunters. Trees were burned, grass was dead, and there was smoke everywhere. Under the name of Odin, the final sleep has begun. Go through the lands and make sure there isn't a single living creature. From there, hunters started to go out and kill any animal that they can find. No, this has to end and it has to end now. On days 91 to 94, I hurried back home to make sure all of my friends were safe. Thankfully, the hunters hadn't found us yet. Fozo, you found my family? Yeah, I did. I told you I would help you out. To keep the rest of his family safe, I quickly went out and built them homes right next to him. Thank you. With the hunter's new plan, we need a place to hide in and feel safe. Agreed. I then went over and saw Aaron and my elder in a conversation. Fozo, thank goodness you're okay. The hunter's plan, it's begun. I know, I saw all of it. If they do this to the entire realm, it will never be habitable for any of us. We have to storm their outpost now, and we have to take Odin down. On days 95 to 99, Aaron and I stormed the main hunter's outpost. There was a whole row of hunters in the front waiting for us, with Odin standing high above, commanding them. I knew you'd show yourself. Finally here to meet your fate. No, I'm here to stop you. Have it your way, men. Uh Attack! The monster hunters rushed in towards Aaron and I and started to slice us with their axes. Aaron took to the skies, summoning gusts of wind to take down groups of them at a time. While he was fighting, I also rushed in and used all my abilities I gained along the way in my journey. I summoned my sonic boom tornado, bit at them, anything to take them down. Ah! With Aaron and I's teamwork, we were able to take down most of the group. I looked up and watched as Odin stood in his empire as lightning struck all around him. He's waiting for me. Go, I will hold the rest of them off. On day 100, I made it in the center of the courtyard where Odin was standing. Today's the day you'll finally learn your place in this world. No, today's the day you learned how wrong you've been. You will regret your actions. And when you're gone, this world will be a better place. Odin got frustrated and rushed in to attack. Yeah! His weaponry was way heavier and stronger than his other hunters. And every hit he dealt did a massive amount of damage. With his deadly weaponry, he was even stronger than before. Ah! I fought back, shooting out any ability that I could think of. I can't let everyone down. 
down. He was very fast. And I could tell he had a lot of experience as a fighter. I will not let a worm take this from my clan. I kept fighting until I released my Sonic Boom Tornado one last time. But this time, it was completely surrounding him. What is this? Your end. I shot at him with all of my abilities as he started to grow weaker and weaker. No! No! With one final attack, Odin was defeated. Yes! Now it's time for us creatures to live in peace.